Hello, I'm Shelley and I'm an agent and acting coach and you normally see me standing up in the theatre space out there declaring things. I don't know who I am on screen. And I thought I would just show you a different part of the talent shack and welcome to my office. I get asked questions all the time over on TikTok on Shelley Acting Tips and I thought it would be a good idea to answer some of those questions in a bit more of a relaxed vibe, uh, a bit more long form than TikTok allows. My first question that I've chosen is from Elliot Chandler. Uh, who is a, a very keen member of my channel. Thank you very much, Elliot, for all your likes and comments. You keep me going. Um, and Elliot asks, what books about acting would you recommend? Hmm. What books would I recommend? I would start with books from my reading list from when I was in drama school. Now, if I just lean over here, I just happen to have. So, um, Cicely Berry. Now this is voice in the actor, but also the actor in the text. Two really important books. A lot of it is laid out like exercises and there's, she's got monologues in there to practice certain uh, vocal techniques. Um, and it's just one of those books you'll pick up and put down throughout your career. So yes, yeah, Cicely Berry, voice in the actor and actor in the text. Uh, Sanford Meisner on acting. Now, I'd also suggest Stanislavski, An Actor Prepares, but I prefer Meisner, and it's an easier book to read. It's a nicer book to read. It feels nicer, it's laid out better. So maybe start with some Meisner. And yeah, Stanislavski, the format's quite tricky in this book. I find it's like, oh, it's a bit of a slog. But if you can get through it, there's the important stuff in there, you know, units and objectives, super objectives, your wants and means, foundation of all decent acting techniques. If you struggle and if it's a bit like, oh, you know what, it's a bit of a chore getting through that, there are plenty of other books that break down Stanislavski for students. So literally Google Stanislavski technique. All right. You heard it, you're not first. Because <laughs> I'll be one of millions telling you the same thing. But we all say the same thing because it's important. My next question is from Batman333. Welcome, Batman. So lovely to have a question from you. As an agent, what do you look for in new clients? Now, I was just talking about this to Nick, who's just behind the camera. Self-sufficiency, like you're coming to us, offering us stuff for one, but also if it doesn't work out with us, you've still got a career in front of you. You know, that idea that you're still moving forward with, with your career. You're not just like waiting for us to say yes. And just like, oh, if Shelley says, says yes, then I'll be sorted. Because it doesn't work like that, it's a two way two-way relationship. But also an agent will take into consideration what your casting bracket is, what your casting type is, and uh, do they have space on their books for your casting type at the moment? You might be a red-headed actress in your early 20s uh, with, a, with a British accent, uh, does very good RP, um, and you might clash with another two actresses on, on the agent's books. So they might be like, oh yeah, we don't have, we don't have space for you. No judgment on your talent. It just is what it is. The two most important things that I look for uh, in new clients is what's your experience and where have you trained? And if you don't have experience, then start getting experience before you approach agents. And if you haven't trained, either figure out how you're, you are going to train, or what are you doing as an alternative to training? Which leads us on very nicely to the next question, which is from Master Gonk. Hello, Master Gonk. I find it hard to get shows on my CV. I need an agent, but I can't find one that works with people with little to no experience. I don't think you're ready to get an agent yet, or I at least 
your focus shouldn't be on getting an agent. It should be on getting that experience. And it is hard to get credits. Nobody says it's easy. Um, but yeah, an agent needs something that they can represent, something that they can sell. And if you haven't got credits yet, what are they selling? Unless you're looking at an extras agency and then that's literally just your look and your measurements and where you live and how available you are. Or a children's agency, which is kind of along the similar lines. But if you're going for that sort of sole agent representation as a professional actor, then yeah, you need, you need credits on your CV to start. And train, now's the time for training. If you're at that point where you can't get an agent because you don't have any credits, you haven't got any credits because you don't have an agent, then you go into hibernation and you train. Put your head down and, and do the work so that you can then emerge as a graduate and a young actor ripe for the picking because you're ready you don't get an agent to become an actor, you become an actor and then you get an agent. Working it out right in front of your very eyes. <laughs> so to wrap up, I think my, uh, my parting thought to you is don't put all your eggs in an agent's basket. This is your journey, this is your education, your career, and you need to build it up yourself. And then when you've got your like package ready, you present it to agents. Like, I'm a desirable actor to represent. You need me on your books. I'm gonna bring this to the agency. I can offer the agency this. And if you're not at that point yet, you just need to go back to training and developing who you are as an actor. But yeah, an agent isn't the be all and end all. I hope that's useful. And you know, come at me with more questions. Um, whatever way you find possible on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and Facebook because I like it. <laughs> Try and edit some of that together. <laughs>